Welcome everyone, this 2023 Lexus RX is redesigned for this year and we're gonna take a full detailed look at the exterior, the interior, and get it out on the road for a test drive and take a look at everything. Let's get started. Welcome everyone, let's take a look at the exterior details of this redesigned Lexus RX 350. Now real quick on the trim levels, it's a mouthful. You've got the base RX, premium, premium plus, luxury, F-Sport handling, and F-Sport performance. Not to mention the different numbers associated with each, and this is the F-Sport Handling RX350. You've got a brand new grille. It's not quite as massive as the previous RX, and I think this front end looks better overall. You still have the same kind of signature design with this L-themed headlight. We have the premium triple beam LED headlights and LED fog lights. You're gonna get LEDs on every single model regardless, so LED is standard. Same with a big grille, it's just gonna be a little different depending on the trim. This F-Sport handling gives us more black and darker accents overall, as you can see kind of all over the body. Be sure to check out my night video showing off these triple beam LED headlights because they do a nice job and they have a cornering function. This paint color, this vibrant blue is Grecian water, if I'm saying that right. And the F-Sport handling model gives us these 10 spoke dark color wheels right here. They're 21 inch wheels. The base model is going to give you 19. Then the wheels will go up depending on the size that you get. What do you think of the overall design here of this RX? It still looks very similar, but it's a little bit lower. It's wider and it's got the same overall length in terms of that. The mirrors here are going to get these LED turn signals. Plus they're going to be automatic dimming for the driver, blind spot indicator, and they can tilt down in reverse. This F-Sport model will give us the F-Sport tuned adaptive variable suspension as well for a little bit of a sportier ride. Then coming to the back, you've got more LED turn signals. This blade LED taillight that runs all the way across the back. This really stands out at night. It's definitely becoming more and more common on different vehicles. And even though we have a gas model here, you don't really see much for the exhaust. Now a power lift gate is gonna be standard on all of them, but you can get this kick sensor optional on pretty much everything. So you got this hands-free access right here to open it and to close it. So that's nice. And one of my favorite things is that they actually increased the cargo space here because the last gen was not that great. All right, taking a quick look at this cargo space, it is expanded, there's more space and you even get this frozen bike back here, standard. No, totally kidding, this is for my daughter. But just for reference, this space back here is grown and I would have been a little nervous fitting something like this in the previous gen RX because there's significantly more space in this one. You can also get this cargo cover that slides out to cover all of your gear. You have little hooks for a cargo net. Of course, you're going to have tie downs. And then on both sides, you even get these hooks, which are excellent for grocery bags or holding things down. On both sides, you get a light. Plus, we have optional power folding second row seats. Those are optional on the top couple of trims and a 12 volt power outlet. Under the floor, there is some extra space, big enough for like jumper cables right there. You have your jack and we get a spare tire and a real wheel right there. Look at that. Lift it up. There's even a little bit more space under there. So this is a nice area. Another pro is you have a 40, 20, 40 split. So a center folding pass through right there. And like I said, power folding seat. Boom, there it goes. The only thing is this seat does not go very flat. There's definitely a pretty big hump, but there's still significantly more space with things folded compared to the previous gen. Now every single RX model is going to give you the smart key. This looks the exact same as other Lexus key fobs. Remote start by three pressing and holding the lock button. Otherwise you can use, the, use your app to remote start it. And this doesn't have door handles. This is just like the NX. There's literally just a little touchpad right there. So these are electronic. It's not a physical mechanical lever. You'd have to pop this off if you get locked out in order to open it. Push that button to unlock it. And then on the inside, you also don't have a door handle either. You just have this button to push it to release it. If you need an actual mechanical lever, you pull this twice in order to actually open the door because it's electronic. It does that because it's a safe exit assist to where if there's someone coming, a car or a person, like a bicycle coming up, it's not gonna let you open the door if there's gonna be an accident. Now the front seats are gonna range a little bit depending on what you get. You'll get a synthetic new Lux standard here. You can get leather or a premium semi-aniline leather. Ours has the heated and ventilated seats. So we've got perforations right here. We've got the F-Sport bolstering. So this has some really big bolsters and these seats look pretty nice here as well. Another thing is you're gonna get different actual controls. So some of them will give you four-way lumbar, some a two-way lumbar, this one only two-way. At this price point, you should have four-way lumbar in a luxury vehicle. 
Unlike some competitors, you don't have an abundance of adjustments. It's all pretty basic, but you will get standard memory settings on here for three position memory settings and a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel standard as well. Heated seats are standard on the base, heated and ventilated seats on pretty much everything up from there. We also have a heated steering wheel right here. This is the F Sport model. It's gonna vary a little bit. You can get one with leather and wood on it with the premium plus and the luxury, plus these paddle shifters here. And after driving it for about a week, I've been comfortable. The bolsters are definitely kind of tight on this F Sport model. So if you're a bigger person, you might wanna go for something a little bit different. But otherwise, I've been comfortable in here. Now the back seat of the RX is still gonna give you some ultra suede on the door right here, a soft armrest, the same safe exit assist as the front seat, and a good sized bottle holder. And overall space back here isn't bad, but it's not a big improvement or anything like I expected with the longer wheelbase. So sitting behind myself at five foot nine, I've got the seat fairly low, so it's snug for my feet, but there's enough knee space right here. It's not a ton, and honestly, with a uh, booster, or with a little um, adapter here for my car seat, the base, and an infant car seat, I can't have it behind where I like to sit. That seat's a little bit further forward than I would personally like, so it's not the most ideal family vehicle, but you can make it work. We get our own climate controls back here for temperature and air conditioning vents right there, plus two USB charging ports. In the middle, we get a fold down armrest. This is actually really nice and soft. Then you've got a couple of cup holders here. These seats are fairly upright and we have the power folding seats here that you saw when we were looking in the cargo area. I thought that these seats could recline. Maybe they don't with the power folding function. Maybe that's a secret function. I don't know how to recline them, but that's something that. to note. Now hopping inside, put on the brake, push button start is right there. This is definitely a nicer interior overall. You have some glossy black kind of in a couple different areas. Some of you may not like that, but you'll get different trim like aluminum trim or wood trim, depending on what you're in. And we even have some ultra suede running from the door across the dash over here. And then even over on our door side as well. So diving into the interior nice material here soft up here really soft here and a nice soft armrest here as well this whole thing looks and feels pretty nice you can actually store a phone right here because it doesn't fall through and then you've got a decent sized cup holder right there i forgot my bottle with me today otherwise i would show you that on this left side of the steering wheel with the power adjustments you have this little pop down area typical of old toyota and lexus models and it's actually softly lined and then the steering wheel like I showed you, leather wrapped here, you can get wood on it. We've got paddle shifters. The steering wheel controls are a little bit funky, kind of like the Lexus NX, and I have not gotten used to them. They are somewhat customizable to where, let me show you. So it's just kind of weird. So for example, there's no markings on here at all. There's no markings on this one either. Typical Lexus, you used to have like dedicated buttons for audio or cruise control, things like that. But let me show you what it shows us. So I have the head up display turned off. It will show this on the display as well, but it will show you, once you put your thumb on it, it will show you what buttons they actually go for. And then you push the little pages button and then we have three blank options right here. It's kind of weird. Then you can just change your stereo mode, push it again, and then go back to these. It's just weird. You have to, like you never know which one you're actually in. So like if you want to push the mode button, but you're actually in the other setting, you might skip the song. So. It just is kind of annoying. Same thing on the other side. I'm just showing you this so you know. You've got your cruise control settings and then you've got a couple of blank options here. The next page is where you do a couple drive mode selections and then blank options up and down. It's just a little bit weird to me. Some of you may really like it and it does look really sleek though. We get a digital display up here as you saw. This is standard, but it's not really customizable at all. It's just, it looks just like the previous RX or other Lexus models, but you can't really customize it. You can change the information at the bottom, but you don't do that with the steering wheel. You have to do that on the main display. Another weird kind of wonky thing from Lexus here. By the way, this little area right here, you see those flashing red dots. That is uh, little sensors or cameras right there to watch you make sure your eyes are on the road when you're using the Lexus safety system 3.0. This also gives us a 10 inch head up display on upper trim levels that projects a good amount of information. Coming up here, this is an interesting design. So you've got this split screen right here or this display that's up there and then you've got just space behind it. There's actually some ambient lighting behind there at night, which I'll show you a little bit later. 
and we have the upgraded 14 inch screen otherwise it will be a 9 inch screen. I like this new software better. We have wireless, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. It's all touchscreen. There's no trackpad or touchpad or any old Lexus stuff down here. It is exclusively touchscreen, or you have a voice assistant when you say, hey, Lexus. Hey, Lexus. What do you want to do? Um, I'm cold. Setting the driver's temperature to 77 degrees. Check that out. So you can control the display, you can control your uh, climate control, things like that. It's more advanced and this is even a pre-production model and it still has done a decent job. On here you've got a full map for display, you can do just audio, your phone, more car type specific information on here or vehicle specific information that you can go through and then different settings that you can customize. For the most part I do like it, you have Wi-Fi, Sirius XM, you can customize a few different things like your locks and lights and stuff like that. Down here, I like how we have the volume, or excuse me, the uh, climate controls integrated into the screen, so the numbers will change. You can still have dedicated climate controls down here, even though you don't have physical buttons, but quick defrost, it's nice to have that, an actual volume knob, so it's not exclusively touchscreen, but you have dedicated buttons and functions or touch points on the screen. You can have the seats be automatically climate controlled, same thing with your heated steering wheel, which is nice. Open this up for kind of a quick menu, and there's different things on there that you can do and see. So you've got a quick little menu you can get to, and depending on what you typically use, it will show that more frequently. To change the drive mode, you do it on the steering wheel between normal and sport, or if you wanna do eco and custom, you have to go onto the screen, which is kind of weird. There's no buttons down here like there is in basically every other vehicle. And one thing I quickly want to show you is this button right here. So we have a panoramic view monitor. If you go into gear or you just push that button, check it out. This is optional on everything except the base. Surprisingly, it's not standard on any trim. It's just an optional feature. You can see around the vehicle. You can see technically like under the vehicle. We can have different views right here. You can change whether or not this automatically comes on when you get to certain areas. Let me go into reverse, and you've got the dynamic lines. If I tap right next to it, I can kind of go and see different areas here as well. It's a nice camera. It's not quite as detailed as some where you can literally like move it around and just see like perfectly around the vehicle, but it's still a nice option on here. Another thing is you can get the Lexus Advanced Park System where it can literally parallel and perpendicular park for you hands free and foot free it will do everything for you one more thing lexus will give us a 12 speaker system standard which sounds pretty good otherwise you can get a mark levinson sound system 21 speakers 1800 watts plug your headphones in and listen with binaural audio let's go ahead and listen Coming down, we've got a little storage bin below there, right here. It's actually rubber lined, so nothing slides around. Two USB-C ports, a USB-C and USB-A charging port right, right down there. Plus down here we have a wireless charger for your phone and an extra little storage area. So I really like this center console area, more storage for little knick-knack things. These cup holders are unique too. So you've got two standard size cup holders right here, but this one can be pushed down for taller drinks and you push that button to bring it back up. So that's pretty cool. This is that kind of aluminum trim we get in the F-Sport model. We've got a few different buttons right here, like little off-road controls, which you won't probably ever use. Auto stop, start, and brake hold. And one little complaint, this is probably, hopefully, because it's pre-production, but this thing wobbles. I mean, it's not very tight on here at all. You've got a split opening door right there and decent size inside. There's no charging ports in there, but there is room to be able to weave a cord through here if you want to. The glove box from Lexus is still a locking glove box, softly lined and soft opening. Overhead, we've got this optional digital rear view mirror. You can have it be an automatic dimming kind, or you can have the digital mirror. I love the digital mirror, great visibility looking out the back. And then we've got the optional panoramic roof, or you'll get a regular, pan or a regular moon roof on some except the base, and then you've got this panoramic roof here. 
This panoramic roof is optional only on the upper trims though. Now under the hood is where you're going to see the biggest change with this RX350. The exterior and the interior, things look very familiar, but under here, things are totally different and not your typical Lexus. For example, there's no more V6. That is what a lot of people have looked forward to with this RX. It's a very smooth powertrain, but the V6 is gone and it's replaced with this 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder. But wait, there's more options after this. This four cylinder still is direct and port injected with 275 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque paired with an eight speed transmission and you can get front wheel drive or all wheel drive. So this power plant has less horsepower, but more torque. And that is very evident when we get on the road, you got quick little turbo acceleration. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Miles per gallon with this one, front wheel drive can get up to 29 highway, but all wheel drive will give you 24 miles per gallon combined. So still an improvement over that V6. Then we have other hybrid options you're gonna get. So we have the 350, the numbers, the 350 is gonna be this one. Then there's a 350H, which is gonna get into the mid 30s miles per gallon. Then you're gonna get the F Sport Performance, which is gonna be the RX 500, and that's gonna give you more power and still good efficiency. That 500H is gonna be all wheel drive with 366 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque and 27 miles per gallon combined. Zero to 60 is gonna be just under six seconds too. So it's not AMG status, it's not like M status from BMW in terms of performance, but it's still faster than any RX we've had. And I'm sure it's probably pretty fun to drive while still being efficient. Then later down the road, we should get the 450H Plus, which will be the plug-in hybrid like we have seen from the NX or the RAV4 Prime. So out of all those powertrain options, which one would you go for? And the best part is they all come with direct and port injection, even this turbo model. So hopefully longevity is on our side. All right, y'all, we are now behind the wheel of this Lexus RX350. So this has the base engine, the 2.4 liter turbo. I'm gonna talk about how this drives compared to the V6 and overall driving impressions. Now, one thing to note is that this has standard Lexus safety system 3.0. So everything's advanced from the lane keeping system. It keeps you in your lane and centered very well. Radar cruise control, even when I'm say I'm gonna pull out, but it senses a car coming from that way, it's gonna let me know. Same thing with backing up. It's just very advanced and it's done a very nice job. You can control all that on the main display. Now, big news, this turbo from the Lexus NX, this is just partial throttle. This turbo is quite punchy for being a little base four cylinder. Now it's not gonna be as punchy as some other turbocharged models, even especially V6 models or inline sixes, but for a base engine option, it does fine. And a lot of you that don't really pay that much attention to engines like V6 or four cylinder, or whatever, are probably gonna prefer this over the V6 because of the quick responsive nature of it. It's paired with an eight speed and it's done pretty well with that. I do miss the naturally aspirated V6. I like the refined feeling and sound of it and just a naturally aspirated engine in general, but this has done a nice job and it's been quite smooth. Now the steering wheel doesn't feel, you know, overly sporty or firm, but it's also not super light and kind of lackadaisical. It's a nice blend and balance. And the overall driving impression of this RX is that it just feels like the seat is lower. It feels like you're a little bit more car-like in here than the last one, but dimensions overall are very, very similar. This is a little bit wider. And ride comfort going over some bumps and bridge back there. Ride comfort is good in this RX. So this F Sport handling model has a stiffer and adaptive suspension compared to the like premium and luxury models and the base model. I would anticipate those have a little bit more of a comfortable ride. This is geared more a little bit towards handling with its name, but I've still been comfortable in here and the wheelbase is a little bit longer. So realistically, we should get some bumps spaced out and spread out a little bit better than we did in the last generation. It can feel a little bit busy and this does have big wheels, but overall it's still done a nice job. Okay, so I'm gonna put us in sport mode and I you can do it on the steering wheel or you can go into the screen and do it there. It's kind of annoying, but I'm not on the setting that I want to be. So I have to push the button and then go to sport. All right, the gauge cluster changes. You can see on the digital display what you're pushing on the wheel. And let's go ahead and get pedal 
down. So from a stop, the turbo's not great. The place it really shines is in town, just getting going, partial accelerations. Now let's see how this handles. So in the previous RX, I did not feel comfortable hustling it at all. This isn't necessarily great at that, but it feels better. It feels better planted. This F-Sport model is probably more sporty and fun to drive than the rest of them because of it. And this actually will get six piston calipers. So you got some better uh, brake calipers on here than you do with the non F-Sport models. And it handles fine. I mean, it's not a sporty one. Don't confuse this with AMG or a fast BMW M or anything like that. It's not meant for that. It's just an edge. It's just more of an aesthetic package, but it still does a nice job. And it's fairly punchy overall. I mean, going 60 right now, just a little throttle and you get a good turbo punch right away. Now, overall, I don't think Lexus did too much to alienate its base but also maybe makes it a little more appealing to some others with some better tech, better functionality. The looks are still similar, but I think they're better. Overall ergonomics in here, I like the way things work. I like the center console functionality. The steering wheel is very comfortable to hang on to. Let's test out these paddle shifters real quick. We are still in sport mode, but we'll see if that makes a difference. Downshift. Downshift. I was pretty delayed going into that upshift. So I would not recommend using the paddles unless you're really gonna just kind of mess around and have fun. Now I just put us back in normal mode and I wanna talk about road noise. This is quieter than the last generation. I don't know if they tried to do anything really necessarily, but we have laminated glass. Uh, the tires I'm sure make a big difference depending on a quiet or louder vehicle. But on a rough surface like this, there's not a lot of road noise that gets in here. You can obviously hear it because it is very textured, but even at high speed, interstate speeds, it's quiet. I have noticed very subtle little rattles in here, but this is a pre-production model. Things probably are not put together the way that they're normally going to be. So take it with a grain of salt. Now to wrap things up on this 2023 Lexus RX, this is the 350 F Sport Handlink. There's so many different other options, more luxurious type of models that are trending towards more comfort and luxury, sporty models like this and the F Sport Performance. And I love the different powertrain options that Lexus now gives us. I just wish we still had an option for V6, but you've got good power options. You've got good efficiency options. The cargo space is improved. The inside is still nice and has some nice materials, some nice features and the big displays as well. And it's comfortable. It's easy to live with. There's not much to complain about it. Let me know what you think down below of this RX350 and be sure to check out the night review I have of this vehicle as well. Subscribe for more videos down below. A thumbs up would be super helpful. We'll catch you next time.